Okay, let me explain something. Sometimes when you have a channel that does things like reviews and a new movie comes out, you want to try to get that review out as quickly as possible. Well, sometimes when you do stuff like that, it can just lead to bad content. And nobody likes bad content. When I did the review, I posted it and I was talking to my girlfriend about it and she pointed out the fact that I skipped over talking about some really important stuff when it comes to the movie. Even on my post on Instagram, one of my friends commented a question about the movie that didn't make sense to him, which is something that I could have brought up in the review. And I just breezed over several points, like right at the very end, I said something about the cinematography being great, but I didn't even talk about that at all in the review. So, what we're gonna do is I'm going to shut up now, and we are going to re-upload this review with some new talking points in it. I reshot and re-edited the review so that it would be in its best uh, possible form. If at any point the footage looks a little different, like the camera is closer or farther away, or it looks something or another, it's because it's probably new footage. I, I apologize that I had to do this, but I wanted to admit that I was wrong. So, anyway, I've talked enough for now to the review. Let's go. Even though it is still technically the holiday season, there aren't really any New Year's movies out there, so guess I'm gonna do another horror film. And I do talk about horror a lot on this channel. I really hope I don't pigeonhole myself into being a horror channel. Yeah, you get it? Pigeonhole? Bird box? Screw you, I thought it was funny. Green finch and lemon bird, nightingale, blackbird, how is it you say? Welcome back, people of everywhere, for the final time of 2018. And today we are going to be talking about the new Netflix original film, Bird Box. Bird Box is a kind of supernatural, psychological thriller type deal starring Sandra Bullock, uh, John Malkovich, and a couple of other people. It is about the end of the world where these demons come and if you look at them, you like see something and it makes you kill yourself. So really the only way to survive is by losing your sight. I thought the premise of this movie sounded ridiculously amazing. The trailer looked like it was going to be incredibly suspenseful and I saw Sandra Bullock and John Malkovich and I was hyped for the cast. And I'm pleased to say that this movie was pretty good. I have to give props to Sandra Bullock. She gives an amazing performance here. She has to pull off some really emotional type stuff by dealing with these two children that she has along with her that she has to make sure understands that they have to keep these blindfolds on or else they will die. And that can be a really difficult thing to explain to two five-year-olds. So the stress that she has to get with that and the movie is set up to where it's present day and five years ago when this whole thing started. So in the flashback portions of the movie, she's pregnant and she doesn't really know what's going on. And she has to be with all of these other survivors in this house. And she just gives a damn fine performance. And speaking of the kids, they actually also give really good performances, especially the little girl. Whenever young, young kids are in movies like this, like I said, the characters are supposed to be five years old. So the actors are probably like around five, six or seven. I tend to be a little wary because they're either going to kill it or they're going to bring everything down around them. But luckily, they did such a good job. The supporting cast was pretty good as well. John Malkovich really just kind of plays an asshole, but he's good at playing an asshole, so I can't really complain that much. 
Another pretty fine performance is the character of Tom, played by Trevante Rhodes. And I first saw this actor in Moonlight, where he played the adult version of the main character in that film. And I thought he was fantastic in that. And I didn't even realize that this was him until my girlfriend pointed it out to me. And I was like, oh, that is. That's amazing. He plays kind of this, like... I don't know, he's like this very smooth talking, but really cool, retired army veteran. But he kind of comes on to Sandra Bullock's character, and they interact, and they have really great chemistry together. And there are some scenes in this film where his Tom's character, he kicks some ass, he's awesome. And then there's also Danielle McDonald's character of Olympia, and she comes in maybe halfway through the film, give or take some, but she's also pregnant during all of this, and she gives a really emotional performance. She does some stuff in the film that once it happens, you're like, why did you do that? But she really, she plays a character that just has a heart of gold, and you just immediately love her. Other than that, you have some characters you don't really care about. There's like an old lady, there's another lady. You've got the Lil Ray, whatever, the funny guy from Get Out. Uh, and you have the man, Mr. Weird Beard himself. This fucking beard is weird. Machine Gun Kelly. Machine. I did. <laughs> I didn't know Machine Gun Kelly was in this when I when I started watching it. <laughs> he just looks so out of place in this movie. And he does not, he doesn't, I mean, oh my god. But anyway, he's not even a big part of the movie. He's like in it for probably a total of three scenes. One thing I want to talk about in this film is the cinematography. Because in this... Like, especially the parts of the film that are the present day, I guess, like the five years after this all started, the world is just in disarray. Everything looks like a giant forest. And some of the shots they get, like the overhead shots and when they're on the boat in this river and like the fog, everything just looks beautiful. The cinematography in this film is sometimes breathtaking and I thought they did a fantastic job with that. Some people are really hardcore comparing this film to A Quiet Place. This film is based on a book that came out in 2014. So if anything, A Quiet Place probably took inspiration from that, unless A Quiet Place is also based on a book that I just don't know about. Really, if anything, this story is more similar to the 2008 M. Night Shyamalan film, The Happening, where this invisible, unstoppable force is causing humanity to kill themselves. Now where the happening is awful and hysterically bad and the villain is literally trees and the wind, this film has more of a supernatural approach and really just everything about it is better. One question I had very early on is why this entity affects different people differently and if this is something that you will consider a spoiler me explaining this bit then just go to this timestamp but what i think it is is that most people see this entity and like see their worst fears and it causes them to kill themselves but there are some people who just like go crazy and try to force everyone else to take blindfolds off and look what i think it is is that if you already have like a pre-existing mental disorder, then it will affect you in that latter way because there's the guy, there's one guy who is called, you know, kind of crazy and he was in prison. There's talk about people in like a mental institution. So I think that's what it is. Like you, if you already have a pre-existing mental condition like some sort of psychosis or even some sort of depression, then that will affect you in that way. But for everybody else, it will just 
make you kill yourself. I feel though like this movie, like I've only watched it the once and I really want to watch it again. Mainly because I feel like there is something I'm missing. Like there's, I feel like there's this underlying message that I'm missing. Because whenever you have a movie where the children are just named boy and girl, I feel like there's something I'm supposed to take away from that. Now there is a movie reason why they are just named that, why Sandra Bullock named them those things, but I just, I feel like there is something that the screenplay writer is trying to get across that I just missed. As far as negatives go with the film, there really aren't too terribly many. There's really just the fact that some of the characters you don't care at all about. There's some parts of the movie that just kind of seem like there's pieces missing. Like there's one edit in particular where John Malkovich is saying something to Sandra Bullock and then it just cuts away to the next scene and it really seemed like that scene was going to escalate to something more but it just cut away like the rest of that scene was scrapped for some reason. And there's stuff with MGK's character and this other character that it seemed like it was gonna be this entire subplot but really came down to just being three scenes and then that's it. Like after these three scenes of these two characters that subplot is just resolved and it's gone and it was really odd. Overall though, I think Bird Box is a pretty damn good time. It's not too terribly scary. It's really more just kind of tense and suspenseful than anything else. The characters that you do latch on to whenever they whenever something happens to them or they are in a tight spot, it does get really tense. Like there's one really great scene I thought where they are all in a car, but since they can't look at the outside world, they had to paint and cover up all the windows. So they're only driving using the GPS and like sensors on the car. And I thought that scene was really effective. So with all of that in mind, mainly being great performances, good writing, good direction, really great cinematography with, and good suspense with only some characters that you don't really care about and mysteriously missing parts of the film, I'm going to say that Bird Box gets a B. I do want to make it known for those that this may affect that this film could potentially be very triggering if you do suffer from depression and suicidal thoughts or tendencies since that kind of is what this movie centers around is people killing themselves so just keep that in mind before you go to watch this film if you feel like that will be a problem for you maybe just have somebody that you trust watch it first and then let you know or just kind of watch it at your own discretion. Thank you guys so much for being with me for 2018. This channel hit its first milestone with 50 subscribers and even though that may not seem like a whole lot, it's more than I ever thought I was gonna get, honestly. Like in one of my first videos, I made like a comment about how Whatever review I was doing at the time, I it my opinion didn't matter because only two people were going to see it. But now I have grown past 50 subscribers and I'm at 65 right now. And I plan on continuing to make my videos even better and I hope that this channel grow, continues to grow even more in 2019. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I hope you guys have had a great year and I hope my videos have been entertaining for this year. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to go like the Facebook page 
and subscribe to Ward Films. Like the Ward Films Facebook page, the Ward Films Instagram. The first short film is up on Ward Films right now. It's called Christmas Past. I'm so excited and proud of that. So don't forget to check that out. The links to everything will be down in the description. And while you're checking those out, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe so that I can see you guys in 2019. Oh, 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 oh,